Tony Summers, it's easy, isn't it, after 23 years when people are not around to answer back to slur their names by innuendo? I haven't slurred anybody's name by innuendo. I set out to do a biography of Marilyn Monroe's life, and had I not looked into the alleged Kennedy connection, you'd have been asking me why not. Uh, it was, in a sense, perhaps the best example to date of the power of rumour in our time. There was never, until now, evidence that she had actually had affairs with either John Kennedy or Robert Kennedy. Uh, now there are. Uh, there are major pieces of evidence from uh, witnesses, first-hand witnesses, Kennedy loyalists then and now, in some cases, who would not be expected to smear the Kennedy name. Now, this whole case is being reopened in Los Angeles, isn't it? Yes, as a result of the book, uh, two things have happened. The chief of police has been forced to release um, the partial remnants of the police files from 1962 covering the investigation of Munro's death, which I published uh, in clear in the book, in particular her telephone records. Um, in a rather mad example of bureau bureaucracy gone mad, the police chief has now released them with the numbers censored out, showing Marilyn's calls to Kennedy's Justice Department. Uh, but most recently, and probably most importantly, um, the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors has convened a grand jury to look into key points raised by the book, in particular, what happened on the night she died. It suggests, the, the, the evidence now suggests that far from being found at three or four o'clock in the morning um, by her psychiatrist, that she was in fact either dead or dying four or five hours earlier and was removed initially, alive but in a coma, by ambulance. Uh, Why would that take place? Why should anyone want to do that? What would the four or five hours be used for? Uh, it seems, and this is speculation, uh, informed speculation on the basis of the evidence, that the time was used to clear up um, evidence of Marilyn's Kennedy connection at her home, and indeed for Robert Kennedy, who had seen her earlier that day, to be got out of town by, by helicopter. The big question that's being asked about Marilyn's death is, was she murdered? I have not said that she was murdered. The evidence, um, however, isn't clear. Vital forensic materials were thrown away uh, prematurely. I tend to think that this is an example of what I call the, cons the uh, screw-up theory of history rather than the conspiracy theory of history, pure inefficiency. However, uh, the story within the story, the, ma the most important thing, I think, for the reporter is that uh, organized crime, and particularly Jimmy Hoffa, the Teamsters Union leader, uh, was at that moment under massive Kennedy prosecution, and he had commissioned wiretaps of Marilyn and the Kennedys, both in Marilyn's homes on the east and west coast and in the pr home of the president's brother-in-law, Peter Lawford. We've got the, the man who was commissioned to, to do the, the bugging, the wiretapping. We've got the man who installed the bugs. And we've got um, the man who actually monitored the bugs. That happened. It was clearly an effort to get smear information on the Kennedys to bring pressure on the presidency. That's the most troubling reporter's story that comes out of the end of Marilyn's life. But who would have an interest in seeing this unhappy woman dead? If there was foul play, and I haven't said there was, I think that we must look to the people who were fully paid up members of the murdering community anyway, it, the organized criminals who were involved in trying to compromise the Attorney General. Could I just ask you this then? Why, 23 years after the event, have some witnesses been prepared to change their stories? I did 600 interviews. Um, that's a lot of slow, hard work. I think that some have talked because 20 years, six years have passed. Peter Lawford, the president's brother-in-law, died last year. That made it easier for some to talk. And uh, others have talked because they see others talking. It's a, it's a continuing roller coaster now. And I think perhaps since nobody, incredibly, has ever been put on the stand, nobody's ever been put on oath, there was never an inquest, that perhaps now there is a useful purpose to be served by getting those who survive, who were involved in Marilyn's last hours, to talk on the record formally uh, on oath. Fine, Tony, thanks. Sorry, God, we'll get that tape cleared. <coughs> Yeah, friends and enemies of mine up in the gallery. I wonder who's going to